بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد عظم الله أجورنا بمصابنا بسيد الشهداء أبا عبد الله الحسين عليه السلام and the 40 series continues with the guest حاج مهد الحاج السلام عليكم أبا ذا وعليكم السلام حبيبي سيد how things how you going الحمد لله كيف تخير الله can't complain how are you الحمد لله can't complain the morning the commemoration the uh, martyrdom of سيد الشهداء is still new and raw talk to us about محرم How it was this year and what the days of Muharram and Safar and Arba'in mean to yourself? Yeah, so Alhamdulillah, Muharram this year was quite hectic for myself. Um, I was involved with the, with the local center and been planning and helping out with their program. Uh, Alhamdulillah, I think the program uh, was quite successful. Uh, Alhamdulillah, there was lots of attendance and a lot of people seem to have benefited. Uh, we've got a lot of positive feedback, Alhamdulillah. Um, but yeah, it was a bit of a different Muharram for me this year being involved and Um, doing a lot more um, behind the scenes and being involved as much as I was uh, with the Muharram program. Um, but yeah, Muharram, um, Safar, um, for all the Shia, for all the Mu'mini, they are, um, they're a special time. Um, the season hits and the, the black clothes are worn. Um, and then, you know, it just everyone turns and faces to Imam Hussein alayhi salam and the martyrdom, the tragedy that occurred. And... In, mashallah, and I've seen it this year and I've seen it other years as well. You see how people open up, how people change, even if it's just a short period or even the change that occurs due to these periods, due to Muharram, due to Safar. Um, people you know, get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through Imam Hussain alayhi salam. Um, so it really is, it's, it's a period of the year which I don't think one can describe in words without witnessing, witnessing the Majalis, witnessing, for example, the Arba'in that's coming up, witnessing what happens at the Ziyarah of Imam Hussain alayhi salam. Um, it really is a special period. Most definitely. And honestly, if I'm ever proud of an institution or a place, it's, you know, it's a majelis of Sayyid Shuhada Aba Abdullah al Hussein alayhi salam. And to add on that, the Ja'fari does get a lot of recognition. And yourself, you are part of the uh, committee and a part of the program, an instrumental part. And when I seen you, God bless you, the uh, amount of service that you put forward was so inspiring that I had to contact you to come onto the podcast because a lot of people, myself included when I was younger, always didn't know how to serve or how to be a part or how to give back. And I seen you in uh, Kamsi, you were the MC, you were collecting donations, you were security at the venue, you were in charge of so many things that I won't be exposed to because I didn't get to see. And it's just inspiring that the Khaddam of Sayyidah Shuhada are continuous and in many roles and positions. Talk to us about how hectic it was in that period because it looked like there was a lot on your plate. Yeah, alhamdulillah. Um, I guess just the initial disclaimer, I'm not part of like the main committee at the Jafari. I just help out part of the youth committee. Uh, and it's, it's, it's an honor. It's an honor to serve the majalis of Abu Abdullah al Hussein. It really is. Uh, it's from the tawfiq of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we're actually able to, um, to serve in these majalis. It's a mercy upon us, really, It's, we're getting all the benefit both in this world and the next world. You know, you, get, you have the tawfiq to do it. Um, you're dignified as a khuddam of Abu Abdullah Hussein if, inshallah, we are worthy of even being called that. Uh, and Allah, um, Hajj Abbas, you know, you, you contacted me. And alhamdulillah, I did a little bit this year, but mashallah, there's some brothers behind the scenes that do so much year in, year out. You know, they, 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 they barely see their family throughout those 10 days. just because of all the work they're doing. Now, I won't mention them by name because they probably won't like it. Um, but there is a lot of, mashallah, shabab, a lot of brothers, a lot of sisters as well that are working um, on the actual program. Uh, now, this year, obviously, we had um, Sheikh Osama Attar coming over um, from Canada um, with his majalis. We know he's quite popular. Um, alhamdulillah, I think he's, his majalis are quite to the point and they are quite clear um, and they really um, touch the heart of the people. Um, and we heard that from the feedback that we received, alhamdulillah. 
Um, and just myself, yes, um, I, I emceed the program, kind of forced into it. It's not something I would have wanted to do, uh, but, you know, someone had to take the role. Uh, alhamdulillah, I think it went okay. I was just trying to minimize really speaking because I know the MC is no one wants to go to a program and sit there and listen to the MC. So I've I hated want... on the MC disclaimer, man. I didn't hate on you, but I've hated in the past. And I had to make sure now that as I mature and grow and evolve as a person, I've learned to accept and love the MCs at every event. Yeah, look, it's, it's, a, it's a necessary part of a program to keep the program going. There's announcements, there's things that happen throughout the program. Um, there's information that needs to be passed on. Um, and then obviously there's, there's periods where things don't go to plan. So it's up to the MC to make sure the crowd's aware of what's happening. Um, so it's a, yeah, it's a necessary part of the program. But like I said, I know people don't want to listen to the MC. They're there, inshallah, to you know listen to the recitation of the Holy Quran, the Ziyarat Ashura, and of course the measures of Imam Hussein alayhi salam and gather around that. Um, so the MC's role is just really to keep that program moving. Nah, most definitely. And you did that and with great, yeah, and alhamdulillah, God bless you. You did that with distinction. So talk to us about the people. Now, you are part of the youth committee you mentioned, and a lot of people that wish to serve that are too shy to come forward because you said there is a lot of people and they struggle on people that don't see their family because it's a reality that exists. Some people might not know of it, but you do know of people that don't see their family because of the struggles and the trials and the things that need to be done. How does someone come forward and say, let me relieve someone of that burden and be a servant? And feel fulfilled myself because a lot of people feel that they don't connect or they're not wanted or they have no value. You're yeah. now saying that there's opportunities for people. You don't have to be in the main committee. No, look, to be fair, I've never cared about positioning anything. So long as you're serving and you're contributing. Said, now, how can someone contribute? I said, Hajim, just on, the, just on that point you mentioned in terms of it's about um, really doing it with a pure intention. Um, so there's, I think there's prerequisites. Um because one, one can just put their hand up and come in and, you know, do any function that's that's necessary. But do we want to be classified as a khadim of Imam Hussain alayhi salam truly? Or do we want our actions to maybe, yes, it looks okay in Muharram, but it doesn't follow through. Um, so the first thing that one needs, obviously, to get involved and to do anything, really, is tawfiq from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Um, you know, we're blessed to be able to serve Sayyid al-Shuhada Abu Abdullah al Hussain. Um, and to get that tawfiq, um, one has to strive, has to have that intention. They've got to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they need to act in a way to receive this tawfiq, which takes me to the second point in that you need to have the akhlaq and the mannerisms uh, that say the shuhada Abu Abdullah displayed, that the Ahlul Bayt displayed. Uh, because again, when you're serving at the majlis of Imam Hussein alayhi salam, you're dealing with believers, right? And there's a plethora of narrations that talk about, you know, feeding the believers, giving them water. Um, and even harming the believers and, and, and the cost on that, both in this world and the next world. Um, so you have to be quite careful. And then on top of that, you have the pressure, the fact that you're in one way or form or another representing Abu Abdullah Hussein and his majalis. It's a lot of pressure. So you want to um, have the akhlaq, the mannerisms. And then to serve, it can be done in any way, really say it. Um, so, if, you know, I think one thing that everyone should probably try to do is look at yourself, figure out what do you have to offer? You know, everyone's got certain skills. Everyone's inclined to one thing or, or another. You know, someone might be more inclined, you know, to be an MC. Someone might have some digital skills that they can apply. Um, someone um, might have very good organizational skills. Someone could be really good with children. There's a, a, a whole um, event. There's not even a lot of people. There's a lot of human resources, a lot of skilled resources, a lot of labor, a lot of things that go on behind the scene. Um, so look at yourself, figure out what you have to offer. Where do you think you can work in well? And if you have some things that maybe you could could potentially work on even more, work on those things, right? So let's say, you know, you're particularly good at the digital stuff, okay? But you're not the best. Um, there's a narration from the prophet that when you do something, perfect it. Don't just do it, right? So work on yourself, perfect it, and put that forward to the majlis of Abu Dallah Hussain. But at the same time, it doesn't take... Um, you know, you don't have to be awesome. You don't have to have the amazing skills. Uh, and mashallah, there's a lot of brothers and sisters that do have a lot of skills in our community that they can really put to application in the service of Imam Hussain alayhi salam. But it doesn't take that, okay? We have to, the, the focus is on having tawfiq from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, having the akhlaq. Um, but this is just in terms of a, a best, the best way to serve the Imam. You know, for example, and it doesn't have to be, you mentioned, you know, through um, al um that's how I was serving this year, for example. It doesn't have to be, it doesn't even have to be through a center. Right. 
you know, I know a brother, for example, who you can design the website. Uh, I think it's mightyimams.com, um, where he's putting every single program that was occurring during Muharram, for example, and is now continuing the weekly program, so an access point. So someone that can go onto that website and have access and be like, okay, I'm in this area. Is there majlis of Imam Hussein going on tonight? That in itself is a service of the Imam. You know, if you're if you're a good photography, you know, someone took photographs at the majlis. For example, um, you want to build an app. Um, there's even there's even someone I saw the other day say it in you know, He had a, a website. I think it was called three one three project dot com, and he was just creating wallpapers, high quality wallpapers for people's phones on the devices. Um, and you know that our remembrance of Imam Hussein alayhi salam. Even that. Um, is a service of the Imam Hussein. It's going to have someone's going to have that on their phone. It's going to remind them of Abu Abdullah Hussein. It's it's raising the shara'ir of the Imam Hussein alayhi salam. Um, so there's a bunch of ways you can get involved. You can also get involved at your local center, um, whether it be working security, you know, giving out t- giving out tea, handing out water. All of these roles are super important. Um, so you get involved. You put your hand up, and I'm sure there's a lot of centers out there that are doing good work. And then if, you know, let's say, which is not the case, but let's say the case is that there is a position in certain, in certain to serve, you, there's a number of ways you can serve on your own. Most definitely. And honestly, it's inspiring because I feel this message has to come out because we're in an era where everything is given and handed to you. And if it's not handed to you, then you're the victim. Where mm-hmm. Imam Hussain alayhi salam and the Ansar of Sayyidu Shuhada and the companions teach us the lesson to be proactive rather than reactive. Because at the time, how, how how many tyrants were there? You had Ibn Ziyad, you had uh, Yazid Dala'in, you had Muawiyah before him, and the list continues, so on and so forth. You see that the stance that the companions took alongside the Imam under the guidance of the Imam was one that was proactive. So like uh, Hajmeri said, there's different ways that you can contribute, whether it's by attendance. Attendance is also one that people undermine. Whether it's just cleaning after yourself, or just helping or assisting someone that's in need, or exercising your skills because you're putting it to the forefront by doing what the Hajj said. You're actually being of service and you're benefiting in this world and the next. Because it's with those actions where you take it to the next level. And you look at the companions of Abu Abdullah Hussain alayhi salam, in modern times, that'd be considered as ayatollahs, mushtahids, people that were of high learning, but they were willing to sacrifice everything with their actions and serve the imam like we wish to do and continue to keep their uh, memory alive. Talk to us about that proactiveness because like you mentioned, there's a lot of initiatives you can do by social media these days, which is very simple. We're doing it now with a podcast to try and inspire people to continue on the path of serving because serving does something to you. Now me and Hajj Mehdi, just as a disclaimer, we come up from the same schooling systems. We can, we're friends. We know a lot about each other. We both also spent time on the plains of Arafat. So we come back in a way, we're ready to give back now. And it's age is not anything but a number. You know, so talk to us about that inspiration because yourself, you're not just limited to the Muharram series. You also participated in the talk show that I messaged you at the time when you were doing. That was something different. I really enjoyed that. And you continue to do service by reading Quran, attending different centers and functions and being proactive in the community at whole. Talk to us about that and what inspires you to continue to pursue that and hopefully inspire others. Yeah, so look, alhamdulillah, it's 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 an honor. Um, I think you speak too highly of some of the things that I've done. Um, and really, it's my job. Your job's to be humble. I've, it's all right. I'll I've, talk. I'll talk. I've, I've honestly just filled in the gap where, where where it's been necessary. You know, I think sometimes a lot of people, you know, get disgruntled if they don't, uh, you know, have that responsibility. And they feel like I want to get involved, I want to get right in, but I want to have control over everything. Um, but um, so we have to understand when it comes to working in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the service of Imam Hussain alayhi salam, there's tawfiq involved, um, and there's also um, responsibility. So when you do something, um, you are going to have to face judgment over that. And when you're um, representing an Imam Hussain alayhi salam, it is a, it is a big responsibility. Um, so it's important to make sure. Um, that you have the right akhlaq and you're uh, showcasing the correct akhlaq in service to the Imam Alayhi Salaam. And in terms of the service itself, the blessings it brings to your life, um, you know, I, I can't even count. And, you know, 
in terms of even like, for example, things like the Ziyara of Imam Hussein. I know this series is building up to the Arba'in and there'll be a lot of brothers and sisters, you know, and we wish we were amongst them, picking their bags up and traveling soon to the Ziyara of Imam Hussein, alayhi salam. Um, and just the, the change that the Ziyara inspires, the change that the, the service inspires in one's heart, it really, it brings life to the heart, you know, throughout the year, particularly living in the West, where you're not particularly in an environment which is um, rich in spiritual uh, displays. Um, you know, one goes outside um, on a hot day and there is, it's, a lot, it's a bit difficult um, to see the spirituality in the culture and the environment that you're in. So these, these, this work is, is for you. It really is. And if you're being even selfish about it, the service of Imam Hussain, alayhi salam, in a way, it's purely sometimes for yourself if you don't have the, the correct intention. Um, but even if you're not looking at it from an intention perspective, the benefit you get, um, your life changes. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala puts tawfiq, he puts bounties, he gives blessings to his servants, especially those that um, give back. And then we see in the Quran, um, you know, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, um, when he talks about the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi, um, and I do not ask any reward of you except for love for my nikin, right? And who is closer to the Prophet than Ali, Fatima, Hassan, and Hussein alayhi wa salam? There's no one closer to them. Right. And this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asked for us in return for the service of the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. So we are just trying to honor that and just trying to trying to actually um, be, say to ourselves that we are striving to give that love that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded us to do. Um, and inshallah, um, I think a lot of brothers and sisters as well, um, there is a lot of, like you mentioned, a lot of opportunities to serve. Um, don't be... Um, don't they think that you need to, you know, go all in? Um, we have everyone's got their different parts of their lives as well that need to balance out. Um, but just focus that even in something, for example, if you do a certain job, even if you have your own business, for example, you could serve the imam through that. You could do something simple in your workplace, even raising a banner during the time of Muharram, spreading awareness about Imam Hussein alayhi salam. These things are impactful. Do you think Sayyid Zahra alayhi salam is going to forget you? when you have not forgotten her grandson, her, her son, alayhi salam, Abu Abdullah. Most definitely, Ahsan. And honestly, it's a responsibility, like you said, to keep the revival of the message of the Holy Prophet's household alive and to do justice to the Imam of our time. Like in Ziyarat al-Nahya, we see that the Imam's love and devotion and relationship with Abu Abdullah al Hussein alayhi salam is second to none and very unique in the sense where we're doing justice to the Imam by conducting and reviving these messages as well. So we owe that to the Imam and we owe that to ourselves to be ready and companions of the Imam in waiting. And that only happens through actions. And that only happens on being on the front foot. Hajj, talk to us about uh, Sheikh Osama, how's interactions with him on and off camera? Like, you know, before oh, and after the events, how's that? The, the Sheikh, honestly, is a, he's a, if I can use this term, he's a real workhorse. Yeah, mashallah, he, he works quite hard. Um, as do all the, the sheikhs in our community. Uh, but he, he really puts in effort, especially during the time of Muharram. Um, he had a busy schedule, not just doing the programs that he did for the Jafariya, but doing things around the community, uh, being involved. A number of people would contact uh, contact those who are in charge of his itinerary, for example, when they'd ask him, could you do a measure at this time? Could you be involved in this? And he'd do what he can to be to be flexible uh, and contribute. And he looked at his, uh, his um, program this year, which focused on social issues. Um, which is quite relevant. It really is. We live in a time where there's a number of social issues um, that are providing obstacles to reach stages of spirituality. Um, and especially with the way the, the world is developing, particularly as Muslims living in the West, um, we are always have, going to have that outsider feeling, both here and then before people that were raised here, even when we go back to our own countries, we're going to mm -hmm. feel like outsiders, right? So then it's important that we try to make, you know, an environment here that's spiritually rich, um, so the Sheikh really did a good job on touching on those topics. And yeah, the Sheikh is, is excellent. I had him have breakfast, breakfast one of the days. Um, very uh, intelligent, very um, good to speak to. I think he's, he's actually a principal as well uh, back in Canada in a school there, um, which is, again, it shows the focus that he's showing on the education, which is another, I guess, a social issue that's, that's, that's become, going to become more prominent in the years to come with the way things are developing. Um, so yeah, the Sheikh is excellent. Yeah, God bless you. And just to touch on the education part, the rights of the teacher is immense, and you can only see that in Sahih al Sajadiyah when Imam Zain al Abidin salam gives the rights of the teacher and the right and responsibility to have and gain knowledge. We only have to see the scriptures, the early scriptures. 
the first verse to come was about knowledge, to read in the name of your Lord. You look at in Al-Kafi, intellect is by no chance the first chapter. And it's always to seek and acquire. We also look at the companions of Sayyidah Shuhada, knowledge, like we mentioned earlier, that they were uh, scholars and of the highest rapport. And personalities like Habib ibn Mudahir, Sheikh al-Ansar, was someone who was a reciter of the whole entire Quran in one night and and so on and so forth. And it's continuous with all the companions and they continuously served and gave back and were very humble and hum yeah, and the humility was amazing. Hajj, what inspiration do you draw from the companions year after year? Because we always take something different when we're talking about everything. Where do you drive most inspiration from? I think the, the story of Abu Abdullah al Hussein is one, uh, it's filled with every year there's different, um, you may hear that you're hearing the same thing every year, right? Uh, but every year it has a different flavor. Um, every year something hits a bit different. You know, um, I think um, in, in recent years, um, the, the narration that talks about Nafi ibn Halal, where the Imam in the middle of the night, he, he, he turns to him and there's that gap between the mountains. He's like, go between that mountains in the middle of the night. No one will, will know. You're free to go. And then, the, and then he, he falls to the floor. And he says, how can we leave you about Billah Hussein? These companions, there's none like them. And there's none that will be like them. Um, there's even narrations that point um, during the time of the 12th Imam, during the Raja'ah, they will be of the first to be resurrected, to, to fight alongside the 12th Imam, alayhi salam. May Allah hasten his reappearance. Um, so I think the companions, each and every one of them, and, and you look at it, for example, you mentioned Habib al Mudahir, there's Burair, Qara al Quran, fi Masjid al Kufa, right? There's, there's, they all had different statuses, but they, as you mentioned, in today's ranks, we would consider them Maraja, as you say. Right? And these were not just maraja, they would fight in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They wouldn't leave the imam, alayhi salam, and they, they would do anything for him. And I think that's where we have to be flexible. Where can I serve the imam? It doesn't matter what it is. And think about it as, as a trial run for when the 12th imam comes out. It's not far-fetched to say that when the 12th imam arrives, he may require a website, for example, to answer the, the questions of some of the people. For example, okay, so if you have a skill set, and you're good at designing websites, how, what an honor it would be that when the imam comes, you get chosen, for example, to design his website. For example, it's not far-fetched to say this, right? Um, so you can think of anything you do now, you can, serving tea to that imam it would be an honor. Anything, even to cite his face, we all, we all dream, and this is something that we wish that we can do. So think of your service now for Abu Abdullah Hussein. It's, it's again, it's going to come into come to fruition, inshallah, if during our lifetime, May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala hasten their appearance of the 12th Imam. Inshallah, Allahumma ajjali wa liyaka al-farad. I'd also ask him just to inspire and touch me and then I can be well well versed in many more things because um, the, <laughs> inco the incompetency is uh, alarming. And we, yeah, need to, Allah. we need to improve on that because Jesus Louise has talked to us about Ziyarah. Have you been on Ziyarat al arbaeen Karbala, your experience there? Have, have you gone? Yeah, yeah. So I've been Ziyarat al-Imam Hussain three times. Um, and to this day, Honestly, and I'll, I'll be quite frank, I don't know what inspired me, what like came into me to actually go for the first time. Uh, so I remember, how was it? I know what, what caught, triggered the inspiration, but I can only attribute it to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala giving me that topic to actually go on to the first ziyara. Um, because I, I, I was at work um, and there was a brother with us, you know, from our community. Um, and he was just showing me people at the ziyara of Arba'in at the time. Um, some brothers that I know, and I looked at it. And then something just, flicked in my brain, you know, I have to go Ziara. I have to go. I don't know what caused it, uh, but I think that decision defined my life to this day. Um, and alhamdulillah, yeah, alhamdulillah I, had, I had the opportunity then, work opened up, there was a lot more work for me. I, was, I had the chance, I'm like to my mother, do you want to go Ziara, me and you? And she said yes, and then we just made the decision. And then, so I've been three times. I think the, the last two times, and it'll probably happen, inshallah, if I'm giving the tawfiq the next time, in that every time I go to Ziyara, I think about the previous time I went, and I was like, how ignorant was I? Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, how ignorant was I on this first Ziyara trip? Then on the third Ziyara trip, how ignorant was I on this second Ziyara trip? And the, the, the benefit from that is we can see that, alhamdulillah, the Ziyara is, is showing me that, you know what, there's benefit. It's driving my, when I get back, I'm, 
the ziyara, it's not just about doing the ziyara of Imam Hussein, it's coming back and then trying to stay on that path of the Imam. Um, so Alhamdulillah, if I think I was ignorant, maybe I've made some progress or maybe I've become more ignorant, who knows. Uh, but inshallah, inshallah, you know, to be honored and to have that uh, opportunity to go on the ziyara of Imam Hussein. And then the first the first uh, two ziyarat were actually not during the time of Arba'in, um, which, uh, you know, obviously it's got it's more intimate. Uh, you're capable of actually being uh, in the maqam of the Imam. Uh, I remember even in Najaf, I had the opportunity just to sit in the corner next to the shrine of Amir al-Mu'mineen, alayhi salam, just sit there, you know, in the middle of the night and, you know, no traffic, like not a lot of traffic. Um, so that has its benefit. But then during the Arba'in, the walk, um, the struggle of trying to get from Najaf to Karbala, um, you know, it shows you first of all how weak you are. Um, and then it, it just, it, and you just see the type of um, humanity that you see along the way uh, of people, again, serving the Imam in his way, whether it be serving tea, people that will stop you until you sit down here, let me give you a massage, let me give you a foot rub. You see um, the feeling and you, you start to understand that, you know what, what are these people doing? Who are they doing it for? Right, who just stops a person to give them a foot rub? It's un it's unheard of, right? Who uh, just gives out free food, free drink? Some people save throughout the year, and they use that money so they can come to the malkab and serve. What are they doing this for? Who are they doing it for? And you can see that this feeling that it's bringing them, this is where the happiness lies. You find this happiness in the service of Imam Hussein, in the ziyarah of Imam Hussein, and then you have the plethora of narrations. They talk about the reward of the ziyarah of Imam Hussein. Um, you know, talk about the Arba'in walk. There's a narration that says um, all of his sins will be forgiven when he takes the first step when someone leaves his family to visit the grave of Imam Hussein alayhi salam. And then with every step, he will receive reward. This is this is unbelievable. And this is just a small, there's many narrations that talk about um, the ziyarah of Imam Hussein alayhi salam. And I want to also point to one thing in the fact that this is all of our showing our devotion to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Um, I think we say in in, in Ziyarat uh, Jami'ah, um, um, Ya Allah, if we had known interced intercessors or interceders that are closer to you than Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi, then we would have taken them as intercessions. But we recognize that who is the closest to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. Right? There's no one closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He has commanded us to show um, love for them um, through his through his book, and we hear from the narrations, um, you know, for example, Al Hassan Al Hussein, Sayyid Aisha Al Ahl Al Jannah, Ahab Allah, Man Ahab Al Hussein, Hussein Al Minni, Wa Ana Min Al Hussein. All of these narrations, the Hussein Alayhi Salam, Al Imam is the is we see the narration about calling him Safina Al Najah, right? But there's also the narration that talks about the Ahl Al Bayt Alayhi Salam. Um, they are like the parable between them is between. The, um, the boat of Nabi Nuh, right? Whoever rides is saved and whoever doesn't is perished, right? But the, 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 the boat of Imam Hussain is the fastest way. It gets you there in the quickest method. And Alhamdulillah, I think, um, inshallah, we get to be lucky and go in the ziyara very soon uh, of the Imam and may Allah give us tawfiq um, and to be invited to be of the zawar of Abu Abdullah Hussain and be of those that uh, Imam Sadiq did dua for those that, that visit the Imam alayhi salam. Ah, honestly, God bless you. And that brings on the point of brotherhood and sisterhood and spirituality, like you mentioned earlier on. Spirituality is lacking in this country and it's lacking in our day-to-day -day life. And it's probably something that we overlook and we take for granted. And when you take Sayyidah Shuhada as your uh, intercessor, يعني, your wasila to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you come with a plethora of brotherhood and sisterhood and people that are on that journey for example uh me in the hajj i am inclined towards his service and i appreciate his work because of the love he has for abba abdullah and it could be seen vice versa and when we go to the centers we go to the mosque we go to commemoration that imam sadiq alayhi salam has also said that he loves these commemorations and the imams and al-muhammad have blessed these commemorations we now see a spiritual brotherhood and sisterhood that you didn't have access to in your day-to-day -day life in this capitalist society where you're expected to work 70-hour weeks, homework, 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 and you don't have a spot for some spirituality. And um, Abu Abdullah al-Hussein alayhi salam year after year invites us to that. And we see and take from the lessons, no matter how tough the struggle was, 
his spirituality never decreased. And that's because of the people he surrounded himself with. And we need to take that lesson on board ourselves and surround ourselves with brothers and sisters and to give back and to serve in many ways and eventually lead, inshallah, to the tawfiq. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala invites us to uh, Abu Abdullah al-Hussein shrine in Karbala. Hajj, talk to us about the feeling you had in Karbala and the feeling you had in Najaf and in Medina. What, what were the difference? Did you experience any difference yourself? What did you learn from them? And how did you grow from such experiences? Yeah, I think um, yeah, they each have the different the different flavors, you know, just like different forms of worship. Uh, but you know, the 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 visitation of Imam Hussein alayhi salam um, for myself and for my, for all the believers generally, it's it's heartbreaking. Uh, there's something that hits the cord, strikes the heart. Um, but as soon as you get into Karbala, there is this sorrow, there is this grief. Um, you, you know, you begin to understand the atrocities that took place on this land, um, and you, you also see that you know Allah Subhanahu wa Taala does not does not ever forget His faithful servants and how He's raised the status of Abu Abdullah Al Hussein like no other really until the day of judgment. And then I guess for me and probably others as well, the feeling in Najaf is we call I think I call, call it one of strength. You know, we want to puff our chests out a little bit. Um, you know, we're going to visit Amir al Mu'mineen, uh, you know, Ali ibn Abi Talib, salam Allah alayhi. Um, it's yeah, it's it's one of strength. You sort of it's not the same, um, not to say that the uh, Amir al did not have a tragedy himself, um, and did not, um, you know, there was not there was still sorrow in the life of, of Amir al Mu'mineen, alayhi salam, but we we know this, the the stories, um, you know, the narrations that talk about Amir al Mu'mineen and. And what he gave in the way of Islam and, and the battles and the conquers um, that he did um, was it's 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 un incomparable. So when you come to Najaf, you sort of feel that yes, you know, I'm here. This is Imam Ali alayhi salam. You get that feeling. Um, so it's it's a different flavor to Karbala. And then and then in Medina, um, for me, uh, it's it's interesting because you get there and you get that feeling. I'm walking potentially. You know, Amir al Mu'min could have walked in the same place. The Holy, this is where everything, the Holy Prophet, right? This is where everything took place. Here is where you know a number of verses were revealed. Right, you're you're there. You're in the the place of history. This is where Islam um, thrived in, in the early years. Um, and there is that sorrow as well in Medina to not be able to visit the Holy Prophet sallallahu alaihi wa like we would, um, to not be able to visit the Ahlul Bayt that in Baqiyah. Um, you know, to not be able to mourn over the tragedy of Sayyidah Zahra alayhi salam like we should, um, and like she deserves us um, to do so. Um, there is that sorrow as well, um, but it's it's a, it's one as well, and and they all inspire something similar. And that's um, you know we want the Tajil al Faraj, we, we the twelfth Imam. You know, life without him is it's, it's got no purpose. And they all in their own way inspire you to go back and get attached to your Imam. Most definitely. Honestly, when I was in Hajj, the question I always asked myself is, how would the system of Hajj run under Al-Muhammad? Now, we've seen all the different types of monarchs and all the different types of tyrants who have usurped the seat of the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him. And I'm like, it's a bit chaotic now. I'd, I'd just love to see a perfect system, a system that's just, a system that's fair. Because when I went, I was very naive in the sense when I was doing the first tawaf and we first get to the the haram it was like push and pull and i'm like i was getting squashed from everywhere i'm like now i understand i don't understand i don't want to understand but now the squeezing of the grave came to mind straight away i'm like yeah geez louise like, we're all here we're trying to conduct the hajj and we're trying to be the best versions of ourselves yet we're ready to squash one another and you know that i'm we you're wearing two um towels and like the women don't understand that, you know, they're the ones who are causing more trouble than the men. Some of them, oh, Jesus, I've got to behave myself. So you learn a lot and I yearn to see how it would be run. And inshallah, one day with the reappearance, immediate reappearance, inshallah, of the imam, we get to see that. And just the confusion around how oppressed they were in their life and how they are still oppressed. It's not foreign because like you mentioned, you can't go into Baqi. The hatred that they have, the hukud that they have is so evident in the sense when you read the narrations, you're not surprised 
Like I remember getting kicked out of Bakhti twice and I was on my best behavior. And as a disclaimer, I'm sure you were, I'm sure nah, you were nah, nah, I'm being well, I'm, <laughs> I'm being honest. I can be a terror, as you see on the vlogs or whatever. But when it comes to say the show and comes to worship and comes there's got to be a time and place for things, and you can't be too excessive no matter what you're doing. So I'm just in Baqi uh, before Hajj, so I'm double behaved. And I just got my book, you know, okay, I was carrying a, a supplication book. And I was talking to the imam, and you got this little skinny guy, God knows from what country, I don't want to be racist and say a country. He's trying to kick me out. I'm like, I'm talking to the imam. He's like, you can't talk to him. I'm like, what do you mean I can't? He's in Arabic. What do you mean I can't talk to him? I'm, I'm in a moment. You don't want to get involved here because you're going to be in a lot of trouble one day. Yeah. And he's just continues. To, I'm like, so you're going to hold this on the day of judgment. You're going to stick with what you're saying. And he's more, get out, get out. And they're coming. I'm like, listen, I haven't done my hajj. You guys have taken a lot of money. I'm going, relax. It's fine. I need to make sure I get to the hajj. But just that hatred that they have and that class, they got no class. So you see that and you appreciate more the struggles that the Ahlul Bayt went through. And you understand why Sayyidah Zahra, salam Allah alayha, did not want her grave to be known because no one deserves really to get the blessings that there is you know, the visit visitation of her grave. And it's because of these people, these type of people. And for me, Najaf, Najaf was very sad. When I went to Mawla, I was like, how great you were and how great you are and how great you always will be. Yet you weren't used. When you ask them to ask you anything, they ask you how many hairs do I got? Like how low and stupid of a society must that have been? Where they don't, like the, the hadith, the, where Mawla is putting his fist into the ground and Qumail is asking him and he's, why he was doing such a thing. And he said, because the ground understood more than what the inhabitants do. How sad of a state was the Muslim ummah in that it reached such, such a state. So that always brings sadness to me because like you mentioned on the battlefield, there's no second to none. But there were so many dimensions and as you say, flavors to the imam's life. And that was always trials and tribulation. And then when they wanted him, they came. If it wasn't for Abul Hassan, they had no idea what they were doing, even when they were running the whatever they thought they were running. And that brings an immense sadness. And then Karbala confusion. Honestly, if I was to ever say a word, I yani need something in one, was confusion. A lot of people have it different. I, was, I remember speaking to Sayyid Saleh on the pod, and he, um, because he comes from Qazwini family and they live in Karbala, he sees it as home, which is very different. I didn't understand a lot of people see it differently. And that's something for the viewers to take. And this is the reason why I'm asking. And I'm trying to give a perspective. And the Hajj gave a perspective because don't feel alienated or don't feel isolated because you feel a different way. Everyone is triggered. Everyone is inspired by different inspiration. Hajj, how many types of people do you see? All servants of Abba Abdullah, Sayyidu Shuhada, all give him back, all give him back in different ways like you've mentioned and all feel different at the same time. But the common denominator is Abba Abdullah Hussein alayhi salam, who is their quickest link, like you mentioned, the hadith to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Hassan, and uh, you know, as the saying goes, Hubb al Hussein yajma'ana, you know, the love of Imam Hussein combines us. And I think um, it's important to say that, um, that we understand, you know, لا يقاسوا بآل محمد أحدا. اللهم صل على محمد. No one can be compared to 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 Al Muhammad. Salawat Allah wa salam alayhim. They are, you know, they are something you know beyond beyond even comprehension for us. Um, you know, um, when the Prophet talks about Amir um, no one knows you except for myself. The Prophet is talking, and Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. You know, that tells us that there's dimensions to these Imams that um, you know we're not privy to. Um, but as you mentioned, yeah, everyone does have a different feeling uh, when it comes to the Imams. Um, in terms of they react differently at different things. Um, but the the message is clear um, and the feelings all pr promote one thing and that's and that's we look at the oppression that they face so we want to fight against that oppression right we look at the lack of uh, love that the communities had for them so we want to make sure that we love them as as much as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala desires us to love them we look at how they were underappreciated so then we need to appreciate those around us today that serve that that serve in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that are servants of the imam Right, so we can take all of these various messages and apply them to uh, what we're doing today, and that's and that's something that's very important. Said in that, what we do is not a momentary thing. 
it's it's part of a, a whole a, a whole lifetime of work that you're doing to get closer to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, um, and the imams, uh, I, like I, like you said, um, they are the best way to get there. God oh, bless you. Now, honestly, it is, and it's an inspiration for us to continue to persevere, to push, and to take from examples. And a lot of people are not to be discouraged by certain individuals who tell you you should be feeling a certain way. Because a lot of people uh, wish to tell you how you should be feeling. You yeah. learn from Sayyid al-Shuhadat's message and the message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. One, not to hold that against them because if anything, you feel sorry for them. And two, to forgive them in the sense where you move forward. And that example is seen so much on the path of Abu Abdullah al-Hussein from al hur even Zuhair, for example, when the caravans went side by side, he didn't wish to give the imam time, even though he asked for him. And then it was his wife who inspired him. So you see these types of people and the clemency Abu Abdullah gives them an opportunity he gives them. We need to be like that as well. We don't want to be too, I had a bad experience. This lady nudged me or she was doing this and oh, this guy didn't look at me or this guy didn't give me an opportunity. No, we need to be inspired by Abu Abdullah Hussein alayhi salam, be proactive and not take the victim mentality because we are losing out. And you only gain from being the better person because everyone has an example and no one is saying any system is perfect. But the system that's perfect is the remembrance of Abu Abdullah. And like you said, the tawfiq from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be inspired to serve. And it's amazing because you look at the companions, the knowledge that they had, yet they still acted on it. Like Alm al balaya wal manaya you see companions who knew how they were to pass, knew that going to Karbala was going to be the end, yet still joined the path. And that's where we need to take that message on board and join the path and serve and be people of change and be proactive. And committee members that inspire, because talk to us about how many children or how many personalities do you feel were inspired from this Muharram series that had a lot of people coming in? So we, we had that feedback, um, the feedback form that we ran um, online and it was overwhelmingly positive um, to, to you know, the different functions of the program. Um, even people commenting on different forms of media uh, as how, how beneficial they found the programs. People's, um, people's kids, that, you know, they want to watch more of these lectures from certain, from certain speakers, from Chef Osama, even other programs as well. Um, the same thing um, where people are being impacted by these programs and and effectively you know that's what we want um you know people to become closer to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because that's that's what the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi was trying to do trying to do with his people um trying to do with the ummah on a whole and he's, he's you know he's sent as a guide um and effectively we're trying to be guided ourselves uh and inshallah spread the message of the ahlul bayt alayhi wa salam and you know be guided and through that message, inshallah, we can all be guided and gain proximity to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So like I mentioned, the feedback was overwhelmingly positive. Um, and even the involvement um, this year, I got to say something a bit different in terms of the different services that people give um, in these majalis. And it just goes unnoticed. I mean, Allah bless all of them. Um, I won't mention them because they were all, Allah will be better if it's kept a secret. <laughs> um, so... There's a lot that goes on. There's what a lot type of, of roles were they doing though? Not you don't have to mention, but what were they doing? Maybe that might inspire someone to do something similar. Yeah, there's there's things. It's like you know, just donating things. Um, there's you know a brother that was he he runs a cafe and he was serving coffee throughout the entire program. For example, uh, you know, it would have been impossible to count how many coffees he would have served over the nights. Um, there was you know those involved in the media team. Um, those just coming in early every day, cleaning, packing up. Those that would donate things, whatever they could, right? Um, whatever they could during their means. Um, and then there's the generosity that you see, um, not just financial generosity. You know, people give their time. People make their effort. Um, and even, you know, those attendees that were attending every night, you know, from the very first night, mashallah, the program was packed. It's very easy for people to say, you know what? I'm uncomfortable. You know, I'll, I'll watch it at home, right? But no, people are still coming. They want to be immersed into the majalis of Imam Hussein alayhi salam. They want to get that benefit, um, just being in the presence of fellow believers. Um, so it really, um, it's, it's all sorts of things that were happening. Um, and then there's those um, behind, we saw some of the presentations as well that happened um, of different initiatives um, that are coming up uh, and that have already been running um, by a number of, of brothers and sisters that work on these things. Um, for example, 
um, the Shia scripture thing, which wasn't when me and you were in school, didn't exist, right? Um, yeah. they were, I remember in high school they had it. Um, we just have a Christian speaker, and they, we would just go on a, on a free break and do whatever we can uh, or whatever we wanted. And Allah Alam, what we were doing, right? And then, but now there's there's actual um, someone putting in the time, putting in a curriculum um, in place uh, to benefit people. Um, so all of this is happening. Um, and through the blessings of the Majalis of Imam Hussain alayhi salam. No, God bless you. Honestly, it's inspiring. Talk to us about the months, Muharram, Safar, Arba'een. How do people keep that alive? Because yes, it's good that we attended the 10 days. Yes, it's good we mourn for the 13 nights for Sayyidah Shuhada Abu Abdullah Hussain alayhi salam. But the mourning's not finished. Because when they ask Imam Zain al Abidin alayhi salam, what was the most difficult time? Was it Karbala or was it Sham? He responded, Asham, Asham, Asham. Yeah, so, um, so look, I don't know if I'm the best person to be advising people. I'm sure you've had a number of guests on this program before um, that would have given excellent advice. And I'm sure you will get uh, a lot better guests coming forward as well. Uh, people they'll, they'll connect with you. I'm telling you, I'm inspired by you. God bless you. Bro. For Allah, um, but yeah, of course. One, one should continue to attend. Rahimallahu man ahya amrana. May God have mercy on the one that revives our affairs. Um, and that's through attending the majalis of Imam Hussain alayhi salam. Um, and we spoke earlier, but we touched on it briefly, just knowledge. Um, right? That's the, that's the quickest way to get proximity to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is increase your knowledge, increase your understanding. Uh, what's happening? What are the, What's happening in the lives of the Ahlul Bayt alayhi salam? What led to uh, the travesty of Imam Hussain alayhi salam? What happened afterwards? Right? Um, you attend majalis throughout the year, you start to get a picture. MashaAllah, the, the mashayikh and the scholars that speak, um, they put in hours and hours of effort, and then they condense it for you into this little half an hour, 40 minute, one hour maybe at most program, which is filled with information. They've done all of their research. Um, they've managed, they've checked the hadiths for you. You know, you'd have to be like, you know, they've then explained it for you so you can understand. There's a lot of work that goes in behind these majalis, and it's unfortunate that um, the majalis aren't as packed as they should be uh, after the month of Muharram, right? We should continue. Like, I'm not in the, the Pepsi program, you know, the whole I'm sure was packed with over a thousand people almost every single night. Uh, but then we continue these now just weekly programs, not even nightly, and it's not as much people attending as, as we would love. Um, so I, I, I strongly recommend to continue to attend any majlis, doesn't have to be a certain center, any majlis where you feel comfortable in, um, and then as well putting in a program in place where you can grow in proximity to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, whether it be through education, um, which is a very um, strong uh, recommendation for myself and the hadiths recommend it as well. And you mentioned a number of the scholars that talk about the, the necessitation of actually going through and learning the, the teachings of the Ahlul Bayt because you see in a lecture as well, how much of a percentage wise really sticks with you that you're going to remember the next day or a week after or a month after it's limited. Right. And then there's also work that you can do, even in the way that you attend the Majelis. Uh, I had a recommendation recently, which inshallah, maybe we can actually start doing this more. And why do we go for unit to university and then we listen to a lecture? We've got our laptop out and we're taking notes and we're making, paying attention. But when we come to the Majelis, um, and like I said, the, this, this chef who studied years and years and he's condensed and he's done all that work for you. Uh, he's, he's talking about, you know, the words from people that they will... Instead of, you know, you read these 100-page um, papers and reports that are written, they, the Ahlul Bayt came and they summarized things in a perfect line for you so you can understand and take the full benefit. And we're just like, oh, okay, we'll just sit there and listen to it and maybe we'll be on our phone throughout the programs. Um, so inshallah, try to attend the majalis. If you do already attend the majalis, see how you can increase the benefit that you're getting from those majalis outside of the majalis. Um, you know, Sheikh Osama had a number of recommendations um, to address the social issues um, that are occurring in the community. It's not a matter of just, okay, we're going to sit there and listen. Okay, talk about hijab, for example. But whatever. Yeah, I agree, but I'm not going to apply that. Or he talked about uh, how should I be with my spouse. Yep, that's true, but, you know, khair inshallah. Or how should I be in the community. Or a number of things that he spoke about. We want to actually apply what we're taking and learning from the majlis of Imam Hussain alayhi salam. And... And also what you talked about today, which is the main topic, is the service of the imam. If you can get involved in the service, if you have time, however minute it might be, this is going to add barakah in your life. Definitely. Yani. This is not just, this is not what I'm just saying. This is what the, the narration say, what the scholars are saying, what people say from their experiences. This, this is definitely going to help you. Most definitely. Honestly, God bless you. And to attest to the people that might be struggling and saying that they don't have time because life is tough. 
And yeah. I remember Hajj once, I had disappeared for a while. I seen you and you're like, I haven't seen your attendance anyway. This was at a time. And then I'm like, look, I've still been there. I've been online. So I, I put my hand up first and say that I've fallen into that trap as well. And it happens from time to time. But there's always a way we can give back. For example, this Muharram series for myself was a tough one because I had the evening classes because I'm back at university, as whoever watches the podcast knows. And I struggled in the sense where work, family, life, and by the time I came, the Muharram series was already running or finishing. I made sure that the podcast then had a series and then I could still serve in a way. I made sure that at times when I could, I made sure I attended. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows your intention. Yet, I always continue to God bless the every stream that had and the Jafari stream was continuous every night uh, to watch and tune in because it's good to know what's happening and what people are speaking of. Now, personally, do I feel that it's been my best Muharram? Obviously not. I feel that I can do more and more every year. Was the last Muharram my best? Probably not. But did I feel I did more? Possibly. So these fluctuations happen and life gives you different twists and turns. The main thing is that you try and make sure that you get out there. You do your best. You put your best foot forward. Not by just saying, I'm going to be my best. I'm just going to put my best foot forward. By actually being proactive. Like we've mentioned, because it's of the most important to be the best version of yourself. And a part of that is attending. A part of that is contributing. A part of that is giving back. Because if you don't, then you're the only loser at the end of the day. Because when you get to the grave, it's too late. Too little, too late then. Yeah, and, and it starts at home, right, Sayyid? Um, so, you know, okay, we know we don't have enough time. I'm working. I've also got, let's say we have, you have a wife, you've got multiple kids. Or if you're, you're a mother, you've got a husband, you've got kids, right, you've got to see family. But, okay, it starts off at home. Do, do instill that love of the imam in, in, your, in the hearts of your children. Make sure that what you're doing at home is, is halal. Um, inspire them. Um, remember the Ahlul Bayt during the martyrdoms. Remember them during the births. Right, these occasions that occur throughout the year, they're again another mercy for us. They're another another platform for us. Another time, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is knocking on that door, right, um, and telling you, "Fadl, come in." Uh, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala invites us consistently. Um, as one of the sheikhs says in a number of his lectures, the game is rigged. It's it's put for you to go to heaven. Um, so Allah Subhanahu wa Taala has made the the rewards of things so high and the ways of repentance so easy. Um, so just need to put in the effort, right? And then you want to get that extra status if you can. If you can find time, definitely um, put your time in serving the Imams alayhi salam, serving the Ahlul Bayt, and inshallah we can even yaret we can be called the servants of the Ahlul Bayt alayhi salam. You know, it's it's a it's it's really a sharaf. It really gives you dignity to be if if someone calls you that. Um, for me, I think it's it's I'm not worthy of that, and I, I don't want to give myself the title. But there are a number of brothers that I know that, that do genuinely serve and they serve, you know, so wholeheartedly and they put in that effort and they sacrifice so much. Um, and so inshallah, you know, it's it's about making that decision. Um, and then there's also the the benefit of the fact that it's a win-win situation because whatever you put in, you're going to get out so much more, right? Um, so alhamdulillah, I think inshallah that should help um, some people to potentially get into the right mindset to serve the Ahlul Bayt alayhi salam. No, most definitely. God bless you, Hajj. Turn your houses into Hussainiyyat. Remind your children with your actions, with everything that you do, that you are a servant of the Ahlul Bayt alayhi salam. You are someone who is a follower. You are someone who sees them as your uh, wasila to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that can only be done through actions. Hajj, it's been an absolute pleasure. Final message where you wish the people watching to be inspired how do you feel they can give back what's the last message look um so there's a, there's a narration um there's many narrations right but there's one narration um attributed to imam sadiq alayhi salam this is um in, in english verily uh fatima uh bint muhammad sallallahu alayhi uh, wa alayhi wa alayha um attends to all the visitors of the imam and seeks god's forgiveness uh, for their sins um, so you know to have the honor of having the du'a of Sayyidah Zahra alayhi salam we mentioned earlier uh, the uh, Imam Sadiq does du'a for the Zawar uh, of Abu Abdullah Hussein right try to strive to attend to, uh, to visit the Imam this doesn't mean you have to physically be present uh, and the scholars recommend 
for example, the ziyara of Ashura uh, daily if possible, right? That is a form of visiting um, the imam. Um, so really put that into your lifestyle, even if it's before you go to bed. Assalamu alayka, ya Aba Abdullah al Hussein. Assalamu ala al Hussein, even. Whatever it is, make sure you try to visit the imam, remember the imam, think of the imam, and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala inshallah inspire and give you the, give the tawfiq to then to then work in his way and work um, in the service of the Ahlul Bayt alayhi salam wa akhira da'wana alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen Ahsan Taj, honestly God bless you it's been an absolute pleasure inshallah inspiration has been loud and clear heard for the viewers but myself foremost I've actually been inspired by this episode God bless you I thank you honestly for your service I saw you I was inspired I messaged you it's been an absolute pleasure Wassalamu alaikum Wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.